Give us a problem that you had to solve recently. Problem I had to solve recently. recently. <coughs> I guess it can go as far back as the last time we recorded. Um, I was thinking, I was like, fuck, man, nothing's happened in two days. Not really. Um, I think the latest problem that I've had to fix was... Uh, uh, it was just like basic shit, not nothing too crazy. It was like stuff with like my dad. We were just like working on some stuff. We were working on a project, and she couldn't get. What, what, what are we doing? What is this? A fucking? I thought it was, it's not a weekend. What are we doing? What is this? That stuff's uh, it's it's good. Fifty fifty. It's not gonna fuck you up too much, dude. What the fuck? Close the lid on your food at least. You're gonna ash it in your mouth. That's all you, G. Guys, Hector eats so fucking slow, okay? He had bro, like I'm doing like three things at the same time. Bro, if this Yo, is the definition of you doing three this things, isn't working. don't be a fucking side soup. Why the fuck would I want to be a side soup, man? You make more money. If you make more money, what? Yeah, but then fucking like thinking about some bullshit all the time and like working 14 hour days and then being stressed while on the job and like dealing with fucking retards all the time. Really? Essentially, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a horrible fit sales pitch. <laughs> Essentially. Essentially, that's what I do, guys. That's exactly what I do. My accountant put it best. He's like, the reason uh, a software engineer gets paid more than a site super is because site supers, you don't actually need an education as long as you can meet criteria. Yep, yeah, I can see that. And you uphold, like, uh, I guess, uh, status or, you know, scheduling. You'd be, uh, you'd be fine. But software engineer, it's like, okay, man, can you code this? Yes or no? And if you can code it, pick up that silk sheet, bro, please. Pick up that silk sheet, bro, please. That silk sheet, baby. Are you not gonna pick it up? What? It oh, did it? Oh, that, I thought you I thought you're like ad libbing on me or no, something. No, no, no. Come on, you're like G. rapping. <laughs> Come on, G. We're just gonna go eventually. Uh, literally on your back. Oh, oh, for real? Yeah. I'm a tattooed on you. Damn, bro. <laughs> Only the best for my for my dog. <laughs> Only Damn, the dude. best. Damn. Only the best. That's like those Japanese tattoos. You've seen those, like the colorful ones. Dude, I actually I'm a fan of the Japanese. The like people? I like I like the Greek look. You know the Greek fucking statue look where they put like a bunch of different guys on there. It could be like Zeus. It could be like whoever. Okay. But it's like a statue. Like you want to fuck the statue? No, it's kind of oh. like uh. You ever seen these like Aristotle type statues? Yeah, no, no, the busts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I like that look. I like uh I like the Persian Mesopotamia ones. Ooh. I like uh I like the Asian shit, but I absolutely like the Yakuza type full fucking full pledged tattoos, you know. I give my life to the, to the to the arts. Yeah, but you gotta be Yakuza for that shit. You don't have to be Yakuza to have that shit. In Japan, you do. I, no one's gonna, no I one's know. gonna put it on you in Japan. No one's gonna put it on you, but you could have it anywhere. Like you, you could just do a sleeve that looks. You like You go it. here, yeah, sure. What I'm saying, you can't go to Japan and get it done. Why would you go to Japan and get that done? So you get that y authentic Yakuza fucking swag. No, man, swipe, I'm bro. good. People that say that shit, it kind of like eeks me, man. It's like why? Like I get it if you want to go to like a a. a BMW mechanic, you go to the, the specialist. It's a fucking tattoo. They could do it here too, bro. You don't think there's Japanese people here that could do that shit? I promise you. We... So, so then why live in Korea, bro? It's because Koreans the abundance, here. the abundance oh, okay, of Koreans okay. is like Touché. crazy. Touché. Right? It's one thing to just need one guy to do you a tattoo like that. You can find that guy. But to find hundreds of thousands of millions of women that you could possibly fucking slay... I mean, those those numbers are just speak for themselves, man. It's abundant amount. And you know what? You are token whatever you want to be when you go over there. That's the fucking promise. Kind of like if I go to Colombia or Peru or some shit. Nah, it's not as not as a uh, big of a novelty over there as you would even, in, in even Asia. Even more, even more to my point, then. For sure, in Asia. Damn, that eye tracking sick. Dog. Is it? Yeah, because it, fall, it falls your sunglasses. That's pretty sick. Well, your boy's going to get uh, two pairs of new sunglasses, bro. I'm thinking of uh, Ricky Rose Heavy Dotes. What the fuck is Ricky Rose? That's Rick Ross, right? Just no, for the people a, it's listening? A, it's a or is Ricky it actually Rose. like a thing? Oh, no, okay. it's a Ricky Rose. Okay. I don't know what a Ricky Rose is. So this is like Vera Wang? Like, what is this? No. So it's a brand. That, 
No, Ricky Rose is, is is a Rick Ross type style. Uh, you ever seen like heavy dose okay, glasses, okay, okay, like okay, super okay. thick? Uh, let's say Versace glasses. You ever seen that shit? Mm -hmm. Shit looks nice, man. And you know what? It sits on your face funny too. It's a bit gaudy for me, but yeah, I, I see the appeal. What do you mean gaudy? Not gaudy as in G A or G O T T I. Gaudy as in like G A U D Y. G A U D Y. Battery exhausted again. Oh, it's fucking whose fault is that for not charging, my boy? Hey, we can't do this. That fucking shit right there, it doesn't work anymore. What? This? No, different battery. God damn it. You can get one of those. How much? 30 bucks. Pass. I'll send you the link. No, bring the fucking... God damn it. Or you could just remember to keep the USB-C plugged in. God damn it. All right, Hector, tell me the deal. What's the deal? Tell me the deal. About? What do you think you'd be most proud of at your in your last hour? It depends when I die. Uh, soon or even oh. later, let's oh, say. Oh, if I were to die now? Yeah. Uh, I think... I'm creating funny about foul. Let me finish that for you. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my boy. Yeah. Shout out to my boy. Uh, I'm my out. Boy. My boy. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> As they unplug me, it's like. <laughs> and with that, we're out of here. <laughs> <laughs> it's just you. It's just yeah. you. Like, you're recording yourself, like, Animal's with me, like, dead. selfie. Yeah, yeah. I, I got a piece of and his with, fucking grave rock. And with that, we're out. I got fucking. Uh... Um, I think if I were to die, like, tomorrow, let's say, hypothetically, um, what I'd be most happy or proud of or proud of would be um what i've done to strengthen my relationships with certain people my parents especially um certain friends i think those those be the big ones um not so much what i've, what I've accomplished in the material sense because it's it's a bit early for a lot for a lot of that stuff like we're only 30 like what are you really proud of that you've accomplished right it's like you're you're still on the way like that your your journey is still very much in its like middle it's not anywhere close to its end yet unless you've done something crazy which okay like fair enough Went um, to jail. yeah i mean like i don't think i have yet i think i'm on the journey to, on, on on somewhere um there's definitely a lot to be proud of in the sense but it's it's not something that i'd be like yo this sets me apart from you know what do you think is the biggest people. thing you're gonna be proud of though well, that's that's another that, yeah. That, well, that's that, the actual question that though. goes back to what this really does is it's asking you what do you want. Well, you we've, want had to, yeah, we've had this conversation, conversation before, before yeah. yeah. And it, but it's good to have again because yeah. you want to see if your goal is still aligned. Um, I think for me, where I see this going for myself, yeah. Let's turn this off and then turn it back on later. And then for now, let's switch that to you because you're going on and on, and it's just me like. <laughs> no, no, we're gonna we're gonna switch it up to you real quick, right? So it's not not a big deal. Um, I think what it comes down to for me is what I what I see myself in in like a couple of decades time is developing or running a business about environmental like tech development. I think that's a big one for me. That's something I want to get into soon. And I think in like 10, 20 years time, I think that's going to be fleshed out a lot more. But again, who's to say? I mean, fuck. Three years ago, if you asked me this question, I didn't, I wouldn't have thought that I, I would have been where I am now. You ever seen that kid? It's like, have you ever thought? thought <laughs> you, ever, what? <laughs> you ever wish you thought? You, you, you wish you did? You, you wish you, you you thought you did? You did? Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Um, But yeah, I don't know. What about you? If I die right now, I think I'd just be proud just to fucking not be a criminal anymore. That's really what it is. That's big, man. Yeah, that's really what it is. It's like not having that mindset where it's like that's an option. I think that's that's huge. Um, but I think later on, it'd probably be like to be remembered as uh, like a, a good human being. I think that'd be a big goal to have. Mm -hmm. And uh, just having people at the funeral, you know what I mean? Just like because in your face people it, mm -hmm. it reduces over time first mm -hmm. of all mm -hmm. and then also it reduces people after you're dead because it's like a lot of people just show you respect because you're alive well even you see that even when you're alive actually because you know how when you're younger you have a lot of people showing up to things for you 
whether it's your first soccer game or whether it's your whatever at school or and then as you age that number becomes less and less and less i i think it's the actual opposite man no, i don't i think for, for most a lot people, of people i think not. i think for a lot of healthy people it is no i think for a lot of healthy people you are correct like it, it becomes yeah. less yeah but i think for it's natural unless you're like some big thing when yeah, you're gonna have people show up because they're like they want to be associated with not them. even that i just think like some people they don't have the like their parents don't give a fuck you know what i mean and like that was the fair point. If you got small families and yeah. your parents, are, fair, fair. And like you know, we're immigrants, right? So like we don't have our cousins. Like y- you might, but like I don't have my cousins in like driving distance. You know what I mean? If buddy wants to show up, it's got to be like a two week thing, mm-hmm. sometime down the road. And that never happened while I was growing up. So like to me, it's like it's not to make it a sad story. It's just I didn't have that expectation where like oh yeah, somebody's gonna show up for me. You know what I mean? It just it wasn't a thing I thought in my head. I was like mm-hmm. I'm gonna play this basketball game or like whatever. And like, just fucking enjoy it. You know what I mean? I think it actually helped me because I was like less nervous. Because, mm. bro, my problem was I go, I would get hella nervous. I would get hella nervous yeah, with, with like crowds and shit. You ever I'd, puke beforehand? Like, going, no, oh, no, yeah. not that much. But I would I would get hella nervous where it'd be like, like if okay, I'll give you an example. We go play bo- uh, at Bonzer, right? With like forty dudes from all all across different schools, right? Mm-hmm. The probably in Vancouver, probably the one of the best of the best players around, right? And we'd go, and I'd be fucking draining threes, ho- ho- like crossing people up, yeah, having a good fucking time. SFU go play with the Div Two team. Sometimes they show up, play with them, golden. And then game time comes. There's like a hundred people in the stands. All of a sudden, big tournament. Fuck. And then I'm shooting air balls. Yeah. And then you know that would that was like the theme of like my two years at south because mm. when i was at killarney man i was getting like 35 and 5 yeah but it's like you what, what position you played growing up dude i played point guard point, what, did you stay point guard the whole time i stayed point guard the whole time mm. like they, he he subbed me in for like twos and threes and shit yeah, like yeah. that because i was like i don't know i was aggressive so i could play like i could defend the post off like a power four because like right it, if people don't know like vancouver doesn't have a big ball scene so like if you're like six feet and aggressive, you you defend like all five positions, like that's basically how it is. Otherwise, like there's like a few, there's a few really tall guys like six ten, six eleven, six eight that are like no shit you can't guard them. Yeah. But like majority of people on average are no taller than six two, six four, six five, and most of those guys you could probably just push around and just fucking bully kind of, mm-hmm. and that's how I played right. But like I don't know, it was just. That was one of the things where I was just like fucking nervous as fuck. So it actually helped me like not give a fuck. And then eventually you realize that this sport that you're putting all this time in means fucking nothing. Yeah. But this is the point. I wish at that point my dad or my mom pulled me aside and be like, yo, listen. This don't mean shit. <laughs> this doesn't mean shit. Yeah. And another thing is uh, you have a choice right now. You could spend the next three years trying to put four hours a day into basketball. Or what you could do is let me get you a fucking tutor. You get a part-time job, you start getting fucking 95, 98% in school, you go to university right away, let's go see what the highest paid bachelor is. Go after would, that. Would your dumbass have listened though? I think so, man. I don't think I had that kind of guidance. And I don't mean dumbass is in like you, Armand, I mean dumbass is in like your 16, 17 year old self. It'd you be know hard you- to say, it'd be hard to say, man. It'd be hard to say because, uh, you might have, you might have not, because even now, uh, I look at kids when they're 16, 17, I'm like, man, they're dumb. They get dumber. No. Right? And, like, the thing is, is, like, you don't know. It's because I think, I think a big part of that is we, we are able to see them how they actually are versus when you're that age, you, you can't, can't see, see yourself. yourself. Yeah. Oh. Jinx. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You gotta suck my dick now. <laughs> <laughs> That's the jinx. Yo, there's another thing in Korean. I went out with these Koreans on Saturday, and uh... <clears throat> did you suck dick? No. Oh, I got like a few numbers though. I'll show you the fucking. It's ridiculous. Um, is it redonkulous though? It's pretty redonky because bro, oh, it's like you're the. This is the first time in a long time where being the token guy was like a gift. Ooh. It's like all my all my rights and privileges are coming. They were down. looking to disappoint some parents that night. I'm telling you, they just didn't care about their fucking ancestry at that point. Mm-hmm. That night was was nice. They're like, fuck my parents, fuck my grandparents. This guy's funny. Yeah. I'm gonna laugh at his jokes. Yeah. They're, they're, 
anti-feminist jokes, bro. But yeah, I was just making like re- fucking jokes. Anyways, uh, so let's. There was a few girls like sitting with us and shit. So in in Korea, if you pour your own glass, yeah, right. To say to to like bless your water, everybody does this. So if let's say you pour your own glass, right? You you're pouring as you're pouring, they go like this. And that's to like bless your water so it doesn't have any bacteria because you're pouring oh, for yourself. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Somebody needs to pour for you. That's right, the whole right, point. Right, right, right. That was that was fucking interesting. But another thing I I gotta say is the recession is real. It's here and I see it. Ooh, how so? Nightclubs are dead, 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 dead. We went to three places. Where'd you go? Dead, dead. Where were we at? Celebs. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, I bounced. To, I went to Aura. Dead. Mm-hmm. I crossed the street to uh, Cabana, dead. When, what time were you at Cabana? One thirty. What Was this on Saturday or Sunday? Saturday. Saturday. Right? We missed each other by like, like, I'm surprised you probably walked by me. <laughs> I saw your nose. Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get around. Cabana was guy. dead. Yeah, I was dead. at Cabana most dead. of the night. Um, and the fucked up thing with Cabana is like all brown. Bro. Well, all, it's been browns for, I mean, the last time I was there was all browns. And it was busier that that time I was there. Super but, brown, but yeah, brown town. It's brown town. It's owned by or like run by some like brown dude. One of the main promoters, I guess, is brown. Cabana is not a brown. Cabana is owned by a white guy. What about the promoters? I don't know about the promoters, but owner white guy. No co-owner. No, it's just one owner mm-hmm. and one general manager. Yo, what do you know about um, gallery? What about it? Like about the owner. Mm. I, uh, apparently he had he owned another club before went under bought gallery eventually but that was like a five year span why I did one of those uh, those uh, those like little deep dives uh, mini deep dives I do every once in a while yeah and uh, I don't know how I came across gallery oh you know why it's because I saw the homie with the with the BMW who's got his thing going or whatever I don't I don't want to say his name because like I don't want to promote this shit oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah okay so uh something like on facebook about his thing promoting at gallery yeah and then i just went to gallery and because people have talked about gallery. you know that buddy uh he had like eight people quit on him just no, no doubt he didn't pay them <laughs> that sounds about right for this scene and he hasn't he hasn't uh he hasn't done their uh t4s for last year yet oh, nice the reason i know is because uh uh aura let them go yeah yeah, I noticed that they're not yeah. no longer affiliated. Yeah, interesting. But um, the, the the promoters will come to Aura and be like, "Hey, he didn't pay us and shit." And then eventually the owner is like, "Okay, well, fuck, I can't." These guys are all complaining. They're gonna give my customer. Yeah, gonna, gonna, yeah exactly. Or they're gonna direct them somewhere else. Exactly. Yeah. So let me take that back. So yeah, it's been it's been dead everywhere though. Like even levels, it's fucking dead. I got a buddy that DJs there, mm. fucking dying, mm. dying. Interesting. Let's turn that on. Let's see if it turns on. Sure. Think that's enough time or no? Yep. And then Phantom Power, yeah, it's, it's on. Oh, it, loading. It, no, it's it's alright. I see the, the feed. loading. Damn, back. Um. Okay, so I did like a little deep dive on gallery or whatever, like yep. what was going on. What's the deep? Uh. Well, it's have you ever been? Because I haven't been yet. What's? It seems like a cool concept on paper. Right, because it's that like Vegas vibe where you have a stage in the middle. You got are there strippers there always or just sometimes? Like how does that work? It's with? not strippers. It's like it's just the dancers, it's, it's right? The go-go dancers. dancers and shit. Yeah, it's just okay. dancers. It's okay. Not a... Well, I thought there were some of them were strippers. Um, they look like they, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, <laughs> yeah. They're go-go dancers. Because I've seen go-go dancers, dancers that could never be strippers. Do you know what I mean? Like they're just really good dancers, but they're not. They don't have the body to be a stripper. Like they would just never work. What does that mean? They don't have the big tits. They don't have the ass. They don't have the vibe. Like it's just they're they're dancers. Like but these. Are... I don't think you've seen. Uh, I think you have a small perception of what strippers look like. Bro, I've seen them in all shapes and sizes. But when people stereotypically think of strippers, like, come on, you, you know what I'm talking about. I see where you're going. But you know, at what the I'm... same time, I've seen them in all so- shapes and sizes. And yeah, so I've seen them you. too. But like but people generally... have an idea of yeah, what a what thing. They anyways, like. anyways. Yeah, anyways. Yeah. So yes, okay. So they're just go get answers. That's cool. But. They'll have like you know rappers will do their after parties there apparently like they, if you go to their events page like Fifty Cent's gone there, Lil y- Lil but Yachty was there. Same with uh, you ever been to Mansion? I've no, I haven't. You're not a club goer though. That's the thing with you. It's like there's clubs that you hit up more frequently. But yeah, yeah. No, that I'm not, bro. I am by clubs. no means a guy that yeah. goes out. Like let's let's fucking put that out there. Let me just tell you a rule. But from what I can see, yeah. 
like on the if you go to the, I bet you right now if we were to pull up both pages, Gallery is going to have the way better lineup of like who's actually been there for events. Guaranteed. Not better than uh, it'd be close to uh mansion. It'd be close. I would legit I would like be down for like 5 bucks on it cuz it's an impressive you list. You win. I mean, I guess you win, but my point is is that first of all, Gallery's new. Yes, very new. So that's kind of what I was getting to this because yeah. that's the the interesting part of the story isn't this what they do, it's like how so their owner, okay? So I pulled up their owner because I'm like, you know what? I feel like five times out of ten, there's some sketchy shit going on with the owner. Always. Yeah. Uh, You're he, not wrong. His handle is doesn't fully give out his full his both of his names, but one of his names is legit. So I did a bit. Of, finally, did some googling to track him down. In 29, no, 2018, before all this happened, uh, before he started Gallery for it, because Gallery started in COVID. Mm. Before this, he was. <laughs> you can look at uh, it's like on the Bellingham Herald. So it's like the local newspaper there. He was docking at one of the ports to cross into Canada with a buddy on his boat or his buddy's boat, whatever. And the CPP comes on, and they're like, whatever. And then they also had some local sheriffs or whatever, just to whatever doing their inspection. Whatever. He starts trying to punch him out uh, <laughs> just out of nowhere <laughs> because, and this isn't his words even because when he got to the interview, he was like, I don't know what came over me. I just, I just went crazy. Like, blah, 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 blah. Fight or flight. He just made a bunch of excuses or whatever. But he just went from zero to 100. He just started like, like there's witness accounts or whatever, like punching one and the other one. And then basically anybody who was coming close to him, he was just swinging at. Um, and then there's like court doc, because court documents are public. They're on the record. His wife filed a, well, you know those letters of character that they do? Yeah. Yeah, so she did that. She's like, oh, like, the kids are asking, where's Baba? And, like, ah! <laughs> and like all of it, right? The, yeah. the whole soft story. Um, and if you keep Googling this guy, he yeah, had born and raised in, here. He was local. And he was a big, like, he did a, a ball head. So he played back in the day in, like, the 90s or whatever. And he was a, he was a kid's coach for a little bit in one of the high schools. So it's mm. really interesting. Um but yeah, on the boat situation, like if his buddy had some like meth on him or whatever, and like, so it's you wonder what the what's going on there. Mm. How do you go from basketball high school coach to opening up a nightclub? Networking. Interesting networking. Yeah, yeah. 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 So then being photographed with like Fifty Cent and not. What's his name? You gonna believe it or because I don't want to promote? Yeah. This shit. <laughs> Do you have any interesting stories about that kind of stuff? A uh, little bit. I actually went to, uh, while I was in, there was a lot of people that were like fairly well known. Mm. Not n well known, but like financially well off. Okay. I'll say. Okay. And uh, it was interesting. It was like clockwork when they wanted something. Hmm. Like in the feds when they wanted like a porn magazine or something it was like next day delivery type shit damn it was fucking right away it was like yo like he's like he's like, like one guy he was like what month is it i was like i don't know august or whatever, yeah, yeah. Or whatever the fuck it was february he's like all right goes outside makes a call next day like whatever the fuck his name is mm -hmm. juan whatever three fucking hustler magazines what from fucking fuck? December, January, February, fucking passed to him, bro. I looked at this guy's bank account for his books because there was this like, when you order, when you order a thing that there was like this mm -hmm. computer that you would have to, sit, everybody would have to wait in line, yeah, yeah, one yeah. person by one yeah, person. Yeah. To, this guy had like a ninety thousand dollars in his books. I was like, why? Yeah, was like you, you can only spend. I think it's like five hundred dollars. So it, how did this? Yeah, why the fuck do you have ninety Gs? Like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. surprising. And like different things were like. We would get transferred into other pods. Mm -hmm. So like if unless you can't get transferred into like pedo pods, but you can get transferred to like all sorts of pods. So right. like I went through I would have too many fights and they would transfer me to another pod to see if I get along with these people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it, a few fights. It, so me and this guy would get transferred a lot because he would fight too. And we would get transferred in the same pods because we used to be sellies. Right. And uh anyway, we would get transferred and like people there knew. Like, yo, what's up, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, yo, like, who, like, yeah, what do you do? Yeah. Show me some old pictures. So this guy went in in the 90s, like late 90s. Mm. In 98, he had like a Rolls Royce, like fucking. Jesus. 
Like so I, he's he's doing okay for himself. He was doing good he's thirty years okay ago. Okay for himself. He was doing good thirty Jesus. years ago. Jesus. He was telling me some numbers. He was like, "Yo, if I don't make five G's a night, I'm not going home." I'm like, "What? What the fuck? Five G's a night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. From what? Mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, I know guys that did rigging for like eighty hours a week. They made five grand. Yeah, okay, that's one guy, and that was gross. That wasn't yeah, even yeah tax it. But yeah, you're making five G's, and he just kept telling me different stuff and. It was like this guy for like 20, 30 years before we were born mm. was killing it. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. And then he just got caught up in something. And then now he's doing like 20 to life. Fuck. And you're like, what did you do? And he would never tell you. Yeah, yeah. There's always some like weird answer. And you know that saying, but they're like, yo, like, oh, let me see your papers. Yes. You don't have your papers in the feds. You don't walk around with your papers, bro. You don't have physical papers. How do they papers. check? How do they check you then? Who? Just swerves on the yard. Like if a new guy. They just know about there's you at that no, point, right? First of all, feds is like no outside time. So there's no uh, yard. There's no yard that you go to. Especially high security, there's no yard. Those are like low security places where they have a yard. And you go so to only yard. state pens have yards, generally? California pens are like nice. Interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, a faci- it's a warehouse tilt-up facility. Mm-hmm. Okay? It's not some fucking cracked down, cracked out brick house. Like yeah. it's just... Nice as and new as shit because they're privately owned. So yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They get government subsidies, so there's no like yard, and you're not going outside. So, the whole time I was there, the whole time I was at the Fed, I never went to the yard. Hmm. Like, there was no yard for me to go. Hmm. So there's not there's no checking involved. It's like the COs will just tell people like, oh, new guy, so and so is going to be on the block or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Huh. That's it. There was no checking or anything like that. That checking happened in county, but. Like, the buildings were old as fuck. You had yard time. It was different. Yeah. I would say county was more vicious. Feds were just weird. They would just kill you. Randomly, <laughs> Randomly, people would die. Like, yo, what happened to fucking James? So-and-so, yeah. But he got stabbed. Rest in peace. Okay. What's for lunch? <laughs> <laughs> What's for Jesus, lunch? Jesus, dude. It was so savage because yeah. you'd make friends with some, like, old guy. He yeah, could yeah, tell yeah. you some wisdom. And the next thing you know. Homie's dead. Homie's gone. <sighs> Yeah. Well, he's gone and buried, bro. Funny. Perception's funny. I was telling this one guy, he's a DJ, mm. and he just came back from Turkey. He got his hair hair done over there. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, I'm going to get mine too. He looks at me. He's like, what do you got to do? I'm like, <laughs> what do you mean? I'm balding. He's like, really? you're not balding. He's like, really? And I was like, yeah, dog, I'm, I'm going bald. He's like, bro, if I, I'd pay money to have your hair. I'd be like, dog, like, that's fucked up. And then I look at like, yeah, who? Fucking Paul George. I'm like, damn. Yeah, yeah. This guy has no forehead. I want that. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's all relative, man. You just you just wake up and you're like... It's all hey. relative. And it's funny because I have this guy who is like... A, he's like a master... Uh, you, do you know what shoring is? Anchor and shoring? You know what shock I've heard creek, of shoring. You know what shock creek is? Shock creek, I know, yeah. Okay, so before they do shock creek, they have to do anchor bolts okay. to, to preserve uh, structure. Okay. Because when you dig a hole, it could just encave, right? Mm-hmm. So if you build a parkade underneath ground it could just encave into the park that's why they got all those holes on the wall in the park kids, right exactly those, 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 those are the remnants the those are the anchors they cut out those are the anchors they cut out and then yeah. they waterproof it and then they seal it right and then they test those anchors first before they waterproof anyway and then they pour concrete hmm. and then after that they do like spray on insulation shit like that that's what you see at park aids is a spray on insulation so you don't really see these things but it's a huge trade like mm-hmm, for mm-hmm. high rises it's a big fucking yeah i trade. imagine and it's only for high rises because you have such so much structural weight, right? Whereas you don't have that in a low rise and mm. you don't have the same building code that needs that. Right. This guy's been doing this for 30 years. Okay. Just started making 95K now. Works like Damn. salary, Saturdays. Mm. If he's if he, if he, if he needs to find, uh, like be on a schedule. Mm. And eventually when you hit ground on high rises, you go five days a week and you pour concrete five days a week because you got to like cover fucking 2,000 uh, square meters of concrete a week mm-hmm. in order to hit your schedule, right? Because there's so much work after p- pouring concrete, right? You got to fucking do mm-hmm. a 1,000 other things. So you have to pour five-day weeks. This guy done that for 30 years, making 95K. And to him, he was so happy today because he got his fucking yeah, raise. Yeah, yeah, He got a 5K raise. So he was like, fuck, I'm making 95K, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I'm going to buy a new truck, blah. And I'm like, I've been making 95K for a while. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And like, it's not that great. Mm-hmm. Like we, I think I hit 95K <clears throat> 24, 
25, 20 more earlier, probably like uh, hydro. I made, I made more than a hundred grand. So like I was at that point, I was like, this is great, but like, it's not that good. And the same thing happens to like somebody who makes like three quarter million dollars. Mm-hmm. You're looking at me like you're making like 200 grand. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's all relative, man. It's fucky. It's though. all relative. It's fucky. Cause if you, you could almost waste a lifetime. We s- mentioned that, right? Remember what's that saying? Sitting around. Comparison is a thief of joy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you have any good last quotes? I got a good. That one. was I've just yeah, I just fucking spent it. That that was it. That was weak. I just that's the one of the best ones out there, bro. <sighs> okay, I got a good one. What do you got? You know how you always have that feeling of procrastination. Mm. This goes hand in hand with that. Okay, this is this is like a healer sentence to that. The magic you're looking for is in the things you're avoiding. Always. So you're the one. I like that. All right, man. Uh, it's been a good podcast. Had to be a short one. Uh, it was an emergency SOS meeting. <laughs> meeting of the two families. Yeah, the gentlemen's club. That's right. Okay. Anyways, we're out. Peace. Peace.